2017 came as a surprise to me. Not only has it been one of the best years of gaming I've ever experienced, but it was also the year I found myself playing games I never thought I would even try. So that being said, here were my top 7 games of 2017. Number 7 Life is Strange 2 Before the Storm So this was a game I didn't expect to play this year, and I kind of didn't. I experienced this game through Discord screen share with my friend Alejandro, also known on YouTube as Koala Baba or Kerr Baby or Jesus. But I'm putting it on the list anyway. I was familiar with some of the cast as I bought the first episode of the original back in 2015, which is now free, but it doesn't really matter that much as this is a prequel focusing around Chloe, Max's friend from the first game. The story in this game is very heavy and made me sympathize a lot with the main characters, especially with Rachel as I've dealt with a similar situation like that in my life before. Now the game isn't perfect however, and I felt the story to be lacking, especially near the end. But all in all, I think this game is great, definitely worth the time. Number 6 Splatoon 2 Gameplay wise, it isn't much different from the first game that was released on the Wii U in 2015. The regular game mode is turf war, which is in order two teams of four go against each other to paint the most turf. Killing other players doesn't really matter, but I still find it enjoyable. Ranked mode is also a feature in this game. Now, I don't know if it was in the first or not, as I didn't want a Wii U when it came out, so I didn't get to play it. But I don't really like ranked that much anyway, as I don't like competitive atmospheres in video games. One feature that is exclusive to Splatoon 2, however, is Salmon Run. This mode is a four player co op mode where you survive waves of enemies while completing an objective. I found this mode to be very fun, though I still prefer Turf War, just because it's the only multiplayer game I've got at. Though it's probably because most of the player base is like 7 years old. Now, if I had played the first game, I probably wouldn't have gotten this, but since I haven't, I say it deserves a spot on my list. Number 5 Sonic Mania. Holy crap, this game is sweet. It took my expectations and completely blew them out of the water. Love this game. Now, being a longtime Sonic fan, I've grown rather tired of the 3D games I've gotten over the years, so I found this to be a very refreshing return to form. The graphics are, of course, reminiscent of the Genesis Sonic games, and definitely retains the charm those games have. The animations in this game are very smooth, and are easily one of my favorite parts of the game. And now, I can't put this game on the list and not talk about the amazing soundtrack composed by T. Lopes. This is definitely a treat for the years, with the soundtracks being remixes of old songs as well as original compositions for the new stages that are present in the game. This game is a masterpiece, and I highly recommend this to any Sonic fan or even those just looking for a great platform to play. Number 4 Doki Doki Literature Club. <sighs> this game. I actually don't have much to say about it at the moment, as it still bothers me to even think about it. When I got done playing this for the first time with my friend Alejandro, it bothered me so much that I vomited and forced myself to stay up that night as to avoid having any nightmares. But don't let what happened to me shy you away from playing this game. This game is great, with a very likable cast of characters and an original yet disturbing story, this is definitely the best horror game I've ever played. It's also free, so you should definitely give it a shot and experience it for yourself. Number 3 Nier Automata so this is a game that caught me completely by surprise. I didn't know anything about this game until it started devouring my entire Twitter feed with screenshots, fan art, and memes. So after it was released on Steam, I gave in to peer pressure and bought the game. The game was a hack and slash with some RPG mechanics thrown in, such as experience points and equipment. The game has beautiful graphics and an award-winning soundtrack composed by Keiichi Okami. The story is very well written and had me hooked. The characters are also well designed, with 9S being my favorite. The game is great, but does have some performance issues, at least on the PC anyway, with the frame rate going all over the place in some areas of the game. But looking past all that, the game is great, and I highly recommend it. Number 2 The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild This game is something I would have never expected from Nintendo. Since the original on the NES, I don't think I've ever felt the screen as Zelda game before. No longer do you have a companion like Navi telling you what to do or where to go, or having to do dungeons in a specific order. In this game, you can do whatever you want, and go wherever you want, whenever you want to. And now of course, there are some areas intended for later on, but you could still go there. This game also rewrote the conventions of the older games. 
For example, there's a dedicated jump button now. Link can no longer roll, but he can sprint. And biggest of all, Link isn't just bound to a couple swords, as he can wield multiple different weapons, such as spears, axes, clubs, hammers, and even stall force arms. One of my favorite parts of the game is the new cooking system. With this, Link can create different meals that not only replenish his hearts, but also provide boosts such as dealing more damage or having a temporary boost of stamina. The game is amazing, and definitely deserved the Game of the Year award it got at the Game Awards this year. Highly recommend this to Zelda fans or even those looking for a great open world game to play. Number 1 Persona 5 Memes aside, I really didn't see this one coming. Before the game was released in the West this year, I had no interest in the Shin Megami Tensei series. I knew they were RPGs, but was just never in a hurry to play them. And boy, was I glad all the memes and screenshots I saw on Twitter changed my mind. I love this game, and the entire series for that matter. I love the balance between dungeon crawling, school life, and even socializing with friends. I love the palaces, the bosses, the personas, and of course the characters. This was definitely a breath of fresh air for me, as the RPGs I was used to prior were stuff like Final Fantasy and Breath of Fire. I love this game so much that I went out and got the rest of the games in the Persona series, and I love them all. And while I haven't played any of the main series Shin Megami Tensei games yet, I'm still eager to try them eventually. Seeing as how Shin Megami Tensei 5 is going to be a Switch exclusive, I'll definitely be picking that one up in the future, even though I know Shin Megami Tensei is much different from Persona. But regardless, Persona 5 is great, and it's my game of the year. So these are my top 7 games of 2017. This year was an amazing year for gaming, with so many great titles being released. Thank you all for watching until the end, and I would like to wish you all a very happy day.